pretty for the <laughs> She's heading for the light She can't tell the difference yet I'm G. Are you also know me as? So the early trajectory of this channel was pretty exciting. I was traveling all the time, doing new things, meeting new people, going to new places, just constantly, constantly doing new things. But now I'm in one place, working one job, and the most exciting thing to happen to me is either my Dungeons and Dragons campaign or, I don't know, a sale at the grocery store. But here's the thing. We focus so much on the peaks and the valleys in life that we tend to forget about all that space in between. What if we learned to see that the most mundane parts of life were actually the best parts? What if boredom was actually seen as peace? Where nothing inherently bad happening in our immediate world is enough to warrant joy? Where we can breathe through our nose, we can walk on our hands and our feet if we want to. We could do so many things that we take for granted. We're healthy. Well, at least I hope we're healthy. Let's romanticize our life. Let's have fun and enjoy the mundane and just do the dang thing. Will you stay with me? Come with me. Let's romanticize our life. I was shoulder blades kissed. I found you. I found you. I found you. I found you, I found you beautiful. I found you exploding, I found you I found you I found you I found you beautiful I found you exploding, I found you Okay. Ellie. Yes. Hey. How do you romanticize life? Oh. Oh. Oh, you're asking the right person. I'm already having <laughs> with it right now. I'm feeling I'm making love to life, okay? <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, mm, delicious, cozy bed. You make a hot beverage. It's like so cozy. <laughs> the sunshine and like the birds are chirping and I just walk out my door and I'm like wow, wow I'm just in pure awe of this beautiful world in front of my eyes. I wake up very grateful and appreciative of my life, everything I have. I romanticize life by I you know I'll dance in the streets. I'll look at the sunset and just be like ah. Or I'll like walk through the streets and I'll just like see. I, my life is basically a movie, so yeah. I uh, magical things happen when you're open to receiving. Thanks. Yeah. I didn't know that I was actually gonna be in these things. Uh, Mia, how do you romanticize life? You fall in love with the simple things. That's all. That's it. Yeah. Pretty simple. How do you? Just like little parts of your day that you could just like really greatly appreciate for five seconds. Feeling the wind on your skin, feeling the sun on your face, taking that first sip of coffee, that first stretch in the morning, or maybe that last stretch before you go to bed. Finding little parts of your day that are just so simple, but very enjoyable. Good answer. Thanks. Good answer. <laughs> What is the issue that most people have in their life that they don't romanticize life? Like, what do you think is the main reason why mm. people seem to go through life feeling like it's boring or mundane? Mm. They do the same thing every single day. But don't we? Um, I don't think so. We have the option to do whatever we want. I think yeah. we have the freedom to do. I think people also get lost in the hustle and bustle to the next thing, to the next thing, to the next task, right. the next to do thing that they forget to like, once again, like, 
fall in love with like the simple parts of your day. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. To a point where like the only time life is enjoyable now is when they get away from the life that they created. I think a lot of people don't know how to be alone with themselves because people often spend a lot of time distracted on their phones or eating things that may give them a lot of pleasure. People need to rewire their brains to think that being bored is actually being at peace, you know? Yeah, that's why I always say I just want to be boring. <laughs> and people are like, why? And I'm like, because it's just so easy and nice and content and peaceful. I just want peace. What do you think, Ellie? Yeah, I think people just have very like pessimistic attitudes towards things and they think life, they play victim mode a lot and they're not practicing gratitude because at the end of the day, gratitude is, is everything. It's like you could literally have nothing and having gratitude for yourself and all the little things that you do have, that, that alone is, is a strong foundation for opening up this channel to invite more love and romance into your life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I do want to say that it is a little bit of a privilege for us to be able to even romanticize life to begin with. I just want to for acknowledge sure. that there's so much that we are grateful for because of the lives that we live. And it's not so easy to romanticize life when you are literally like battling a poverty or going through a really hardship in your life. So I'm super True. thankful that we can, but romanticizing your life is also completely all about gratitude. Just like yeah. really enjoying the simple things in life. And even though things may be shitty at the moment, you can still have a sip of water, coffee, tea, and enjoy the shit out of that and romanticize mm -hmm. that yeah, little aspect of your life. Yeah, do one thing that's gonna like really yeah. make your day enjoyable. Exactly, even treat yourself. It, yeah, like, means like having like a nice hot shower. Hey, thank you so much, okay, bye, see you later. Yeah. You know how people always say that they wish that they could fall in love? You know people always that they wish they could fall in love. You know people always say that they wish they could fall in love like the movies. That sounds like that. Have you ever had a dream that was so that you couldn't that what? You know how people always say that they wish they could fall in love like the movies. I always thought that that was such a crazy thought that this man-made moving picture was enough to create this false emotion that the movies make us feel something that would otherwise be impossible to feel. And then it hit me. Films are just telling you a story, and the way that your brain and your body react is just. You. you don't need to fall in love like the movies. The movies just remind you of something that you've already been born to feel. The only difference between a weed and a flower is judgment. Wayne Dyer. The biggest lesson that I've taken in my 20s is that perspective is everything. So the etymology, etymology? I don't know if you know anything about etymology, but etymology is the root and origin of most words. The etymology of Optimism is optim, which means the best. Optimistic sounds awfully a lot like optical, ophthalmology, optician. So I looked up the etymology of that too. Opticus means of seeing, of sight. So clearly an optimist sees the best in life. It's not that big of a view, but you know what? So if you want to live a good life, it's really a matter of changing your perspective. And if you want to experience peace, you should know that you never really lost it. Drone shot. Thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun to create. I am in my first year of doing a video every single week, so I am still climbing up that ladder of trying and creating new things that really just spark and create joy for me. So if you like what you saw, if you like who I am, if you like what I'm doing, subscribe, press like, send me a comment down below, give me some tips and tricks on how I can improve or what kind of content you want to see, and I shall see you next week. I love you. Okay, bye. I found I found you Your head shakes out your heart You're pulling yourself apart With sweat bleeding down I found you hey. I found you Look at the calm across your face Look at the state you got this place Look in a music video. Her name is Noel Paye. I love how you can see everything. I love wide angle so much. <sighs> credit cards are the goat, bro. I use a credit card for this. And that just introduces today's sponsor, Jokes. <laughs>